Our first guest of the evening shot to fame for her tough love approach to health and fitness on Operation Transformation. She's also a best-selling author and she's taking on type 2 diabetes in her upcoming book. Now, tonight she's joined by a woman who was diagnosed with the disease but with a lifestyle change and zero medication she's managed to return to full health. Let's welcome Dr. Ava Orsmond and her client Peggy Cheevers. Hello ladies. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Now Dr. Ava we know you as the very straight talking person from Operation Transformation and, of course, from your various documentaries where you've taken on Ireland's sugar addiction. But type 2 diabetes, you're writing a book about it. Why, why now? I mean, I have been actually writing it for quite some time. Yeah. But it just haven't had enough time to finish it. And now, you know, obviously, this is giving me the last push to finish it. But it's just that I've been seeing it over the years when people have been losing weight, you know, how they basically, their health improves. And obviously, the type 2 diabetics, you know, they, they HbA1c, which is the way we measure the, the control, you know, basically drops. And this is basically happens, happened in 2003, 2004. So I sort of got into it quite accidentally. And yeah. then I, in, in medical conferences, talking to colleagues. And obviously at the time, we were talking about type 2 diabetes just being chronic progressive disease, and there was nothing to be done once you had it. Mm. And, and obviously then, you know, seeing it in reality, then seeing it and looking at more research, and obviously following also Professor Taylor in Newcastle University, you know, I started to invest more in very low calorie ketogenic diets and use that especially, you know, for people who have right. type 2 diabetes. Because in the end of the day, you know, it's, it's that fat in the middle where the insulin resistance, which is the base of the disease, lives. So if you basically have a waistline measurement that it's more than half of your height, yeah. every single centimetre is basically more or less representing one kilo, 2.2 pounds. Okay. So if, for example, as a woman, you have a waistline measurement measured at the level, level of your belly button, and that yeah. is 90 centimetres, and you are 160 centimetres tall, you have 10 centimetres extra. And that is 10 kilos, okay. which is a, you know, you could say, you know, it's, that's, it's stone and a half. And or, that's what's yeah. causing it. And, but, you know, typically we think about that somebody who is type 2 diabetic is very heavy, very obese. And that's why I like that, you know, this is a really good example. Peggy's yeah. case that she only needed to lose just over a stone. Because with Peggy, now you are, you went to Dr. Ava, but before you went to Dr. Ava, you had diabetes for a long time and you didn't know that you had type 2 diabetes. Correct, yes. So how, how was it so, living with it? What was your life like? My life was normal. I didn't yeah. know I had diabetes until I went for a blood test and it showed up. And immediately I was called back and told that I would have to go on medication straight away, that that was the only answer. So I went on medication. It didn't suit me. I felt really, really ill. And they tried to reduce it a little bit, but it didn't work. So I was sent into the hospital then for a checkup to the diabetic clinic. And one young doctor thought it could be reversed, but he, he was quickly shot down by the nurse who said, no way, it can't be reversed. Okay. So I suffered on for about six months, feeling terribly bad, until one morning my friend Bernie rang me and said, would you think about Dr. Ava? Right. So that was it. Okay. Now, you had seen Dr. Ava before, I assume, on I TV. Had. So that would scare the life out. <laughs> <laughs> well, not I really. would never get rid of this. <laughs> it, it was more scary to find out I had diabetes. Right. So right. I was prepared for anything. So I took my chances. Okay. Yeah. And I found her fantastic. When I, you know, I made an appointment, I went over to visit her, and I found her, to being in education myself, I found the first thing with the Dr. Ava was she explained everything clearly to me you know, what I had to do and what was the causes of it and that it could be reversed with diet. OK. So I believed her. OK, Dr. Ava, is this a one-size-fits-all? Like, it can't no. work for everybody? In medicine, you can never say, you know, guarantee or say anything. But like that, as I said, the type 2 diabetes, in 99.9% .9 cases, is just insulin resistance, which is caused by the, the fat in the middle. And we basically talk about this personal fat threshold. So basically, almost like there are some people who are almost like allergic, intolerant to the fat, and they would get the type 2 diabetes or generally medical consequences with lower fat amount than somebody else. Like some people could be 20, 25 stone, severely morbidly obese until they get diabetes and it would, could be only mild form. Right. So almost like they get away with murder for longer, where somebody else, they almost like the excess weight did really not suit their make, makeup. Yeah. And, and, and this is obviously something that it's researched at the moment. We don't know why this, that some people, like Peggy, really didn't deserve type 2 diabetes yeah. because you would just think that you know after you're on your 
50s if you have a stone, stone and a half of excess weight, a little bit, you know, waistline. It's, it's not really that serious. And like mm -hmm. that, she went for routine health health checkup. She did that just to, to make to sure, make in, yeah. but, but never thinking because she didn't have any symptoms. And this is obviously the biggest worry about type 2 diabetes is that those symptoms can be so what, silent what or the, you don't have any symptoms. But what are the symptoms then? Now, the, the typical ones would be that you are thirsty and then you go to the toilet, often to urinate. Uh, you could have recurrent infections, but the reality is that many people find out that they have type 2 diabetes when they wake up in A&E having heart attack or stroke or something serious, or they go for an eye, eye checkup and they find out that their eyes so, are deterior eyesight is deteriorating. Yeah. But the whole thing is that some people just have fatigue, chronic fatigue, that they yeah. sort of learn to live with it. And, you know, after when you get used to something, you don't anymore think that there's yeah. anything wrong. Or people say to me, problems with concentration, foggy brain, you know, then, you know, typical would be obviously women, especially having vaginal yeah. trash, you know, trust skin infections. I mean, the list is really endless. And this is obviously the worries that, you know, we have you those mean, classic symptoms and then there is this whole wide range around it. I think over the last 17 years, I think I have heard every single of symptom of type 2 diabetes. And, and with this, of course, you're what you're working towards is reversing type 2 diabetes through sort of exercise, not using tablets. You see, so actually, you just said something that really irritates me, me, that you said exercise. Exercise is only 20%. Exactly. It's 80% is diet. Exercise comes after when you have lost the weight because really you can't exercise away a huge amount of excess right. weight. Right, okay. And also, going further, like we were joking here about sugar and all these things, really, diet is the foundation of our health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and what, what I, with my new book, which hopefully will be out there in a few months, I want to empower people who have type 2 diabetes okay. to take control themselves of something, a knowledge that is, is research, there's a name behind, it's, it's packed up, and almost like that the people can become expert in their own field, because this is the approach we have for, for medicine in Finland, yeah. that if you are diagnosed with a chronic condition, you basically become an expert on your, on mm -hmm. your condition, yeah. Yeah, you so that you are not just yeah. going to a doctor and thinking that's a god who tells you what to do. Yeah. Because like that, I think it's horrendous that in 2017 she was told that type 2 diabetes can't be reversed in a university hospital so, in so Ireland. So how, well, how has your life changed now, Peggy? My life has changed immensely because I have much more energy and I, I'm very happy myself and I'm, I'm a changed person. I think I'm livelier and I'm enjoying my life better. I have walked the socks off the dog. <laughs> um, my husband is educated and he's now having normal family meals, much different ones than he had before. And it's a tablet-free life as well. A tablet-free life, which is a fantastic That's side of it, yeah. It's wonderful. You look fantastic. Thank you very much. You're very happy with it but and everything see, like that as well. It's, it's the main thing is that type 2 diabetes takes 15 years of our life expectancy and we know that the last 10 years you live on chronic ailments which you are treating with different tablets. So yeah. obviously the fact that if you are if you're getting rid of it, such a huge risk for your health, you know, you can actually look forward to your your last years being your actually more mature active. Years. Yes. Yes. Your more mature I'll need years. the last ten years if I'm gonna keep on being irritating. <laughs> I have to, yeah, exactly. to stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Get in contact, though. <laughs> Peggy, we want to say thank you so much for coming in and congratulations on reversing the diagnosis. Thank it's you absolutely very much. fantastic. Uh, now, we're going to be hearing more about Dr. Ava's upcoming book later on in the show. But in the sixth kitchen, Yvonne Connolly is joined by a face that is very familiar to this parish. It is sports presenter Sinead Kassad. Hello. <laughs> now, Although you are a TV3 woman, I see you every day. It's our first time getting you here in the kitchen. Oh, listen, come here. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so glad to be here. So thanks for asking me. She is, yeah. She's like, can I just go back outside now and watch a bit of sport? <laughs> not, not at all. Not at all. Are you very healthy? You know, would you pass Dr. Ava's test? We were just talking about that, I think, because, you know, the job involves a bit of travel. So it's trying to get that balance between, you know, like, eating well and, you know, like exercising and all the rest. So I suppose even more so it's trying to get that balance right when there's a bit of travel involved in your job. So I think that's my challenge even for the next few weeks while the Six Nations is going on is still to try and find the time to eat healthy um, when you're kind of busier than, than usual, I suppose. Yvonne will pack some lunches for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, it's all about prep. It's, it, if you're busy, you just have to kind of prep the night before if you're going to eat healthy. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're just going to reach for 
chocolate or any, you know, you're busy and you're tired and you're traveling yeah. and you can't mm. get access to healthy food a lot of the time. So it's all about the prep of things. Mm. And now, Yvonne, as we've spoken about sugar a little bit today, uh, but if you do want to treat yourself to a tiny piece of this cake tonight, uh, we have to get Dr. Ava's permission, of course. What will we need to join in with you, Yvonne? See, no sugar. I was going to try and fool you all, think, oh, it's carrot and courgette cake. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Eve is here, and I was like, oh, I can't do that. Okay, so we've got a little bit of sugar, but the carrots and the courgettes and some other ingredients I have are going to add a lot of the sweetness. So maybe not so much as you might put in another cake. Um, so a little bit healthier. And, but tonight, um, we are being conscientious about health, but also about food waste. And I've done some work with Little, and they are very much, they're very conscientious about food waste and, and food surplus and, and yeah. kind of trying to spread it around. And, and, you know, I used to love that show years ago, Ready, Steady, Cook, where they just gave you certain ingredients and you'd come up with something. So mm. it's a little bit like to encourage people just to open their fridge, look what's in your fridge, and try and make something of it. We're getting and a, a, waste of food. a little bit later oh. on. I like it. OK, after the break, Sinead will be here to tell us all about how she's gearing up to cover the upcoming Mac by Six Nations. And Dr. Eva will be setting, staying put too. Remember, if we, I, if we want to hear if you've ever been caught out by the booze ban now that it's been overturned. Get any comments or questions you have for our guests. You can keep them coming in to us on WhatsApp 083 360 60 60 and we'll see you shortly.